Good morning! Welcome to Worship at First Christian Church. Today is a special day of worship as we will hear from some of our young people who participated in Vacation Bible School as together we explore the theme that they shared, following Jesus. So we invite you to gather whatever communion elements you will use for communion later in the service, as well as a candle if you would like to light one alongside us. We do light our candle this morning, a reminder that God is always present with us. And now we are invited to sing together one of the songs the children learned at Vacation Bible School, Peace Like a River. Let us worship God. Candle lighting is something we have often shared as an act of prayer. So as we begin our time of prayer, we light a candle remembering those in our community dealing with housing insecurities and those working to support those individuals and families. We light a candle for those struggling with mental health and addictions and continue to lack access to needed services. And we light a candle for whatever prayer is on your heart today. May we support you in offering your prayer to our Creator. Let us pray. Loving Creator, as we gather in this time, we offer you thanks for the creativity needed to move faith experiences to a new way of worship and being your church in the world. For your graciousness as we stumble through this new reality of life, for your encouragement when things are hard. God, we also offer thanks for the gift that people are to us and others in the world. Those who take care of the sick, feed the hungry, and reach out with an openness to listen to others' stories. We give you thanks for those who work with and engage the children and youth. While kids are adaptable and cheerful, sometimes we forget that they too are deeply affected by the happenings in our world. God, guide our hearts to know that we are not helpless in our community and in the world. Today, may we hear Jesus' words, follow me, and respond with action. For much has already been done, but there are still many places and many people who have yet to experience your love and your welcome. So may we remember especially those in our community who struggle with housing insecurity. May we remember those who struggle with mental health and addiction. 
May we continue to hold in prayer those people who are grieving the loss of loved ones. And may we lift up the many other spoken and unspoken prayers of your people. In your name we pray. Amen. For Vacation Bible School this summer, the stories and themes were centered around Jesus' words, follow me. Jesus has recorded saying these wor two words many times in scripture and throughout our VBS programming. We considered what these words meant to people in Jesus' time as, and as well as for us today. Today, let us hear Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 through 22, as Jesus calls the first disciples in one of the first instances of Jesus saying, follow me. Let us listen for a word from God. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his, other, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. May God bless our hearing of this word. Hello friends and welcome to our first ever online Vacation Bible School. My name is Kara and I'm super excited about all we have to share with you over the course of the next four weeks. From stories and snacks to crafts and ways to move your body and of course science and music. Our theme for VBS this year is follow me, something that Jesus says a lot in scripture. In fact, Jesus says, follow me over 20 times in the first four books of the New Testament. During VBS, we will look at these two words through four different stories in the Bible, wondering what they meant to the people who lived with Jesus, as well as what they mean to us today. In week one, we heard the story of Jesus calling the first disciples from Matthew chapter four. We learned how they were fishermen but left their jobs behind to follow Jesus. The disciples learned a lot about God's love from Jesus, and we learned how the relationships and friendships they built with people helped them to share the message of Jesus. We too can follow Jesus by choosing to put people first. Jesus was walking through Galilee. He saw some men fishing out at sea. The men had been waiting we are going to use the shaker the night, to keep the beads in our song today. You can shake on the beads Both like this. Both men were sure and Jesus asked their names. Brothers Peter, Andrew, if brothers John, and James. If you want to get more fancy, Jesus you can ask the shakes to you. Back, got kind to of like see. this. Let's see if you catch some fish with me. And he said, daytime, nighttime, rain and sunshine. You want to take a binder clip, a paper clip, and Talk put it on the fish. So it's got something that is metal. Now, then you can put your fish on a table, on the floor, and then you can try and catch your fish. And today we're going to do two moves of Qigong. One is called moving to, toward heaven. So the arms are going to be next to your body. And Beanie, my dog, is here to help us out here today. Arms come up. And they're going to go all the way above your head. And then your palms of your hands are going to come down. And you're going to come right in the center of your body down. In week two, Pastor Jill and Tegan shared the story of Jesus feeding a whole lot of people from John chapter six. At this point in Jesus's ministry, people were starting to get to know him. He'd been doing ministry and healing people for a little while, and people really liked to listen to him. And they knew that they could trust him to help them when they needed it. In fact, Jesus was popular enough that when he went places, people followed him. And that's what happened this day. 
Jesus knew the people were hungry and asked the disciples to make a plan to feed them. When the disciples didn't know how to feed all the people, a boy came forward and gave his lunch to Jesus. Jesus gave thanks for this child's lunch, and the next thing we know, every one of those people had food to eat. We too can follow Jesus by taking care of people's needs and sharing what we have. This week, we are going to be making a beaded fish keychain, one to keep and one to share, just like our boy in the story. Let's get started. And you can see that that little bit of powder has multiplied to many times its own size. And you can feel it, it feels cold, and it even looks like snow. And in fact, a lot of times in the movies, they use this stuff for fake snow. Hey guys, stuck at Winkle Vacation and Bible School. Um, so today we're going to be doing confetti macaroni style and you guys have this menu too. we got out our rhythm sticks to keep the beat to a song that reminds us that we can rely on God's love to be there for us all the time. Kalia led the song, All That You Need, on her ukulele, and we'd like to share it with you. shared the story of the woman Jesus meets at a well in Samaria. Rules in society at that time said that Jesus and the woman shouldn't speak to each other. But do you know what happens in this story? Jesus asks the woman for a drink. She was surprised and she said, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jesus said, if you knew who was asking, you would have asked me, for the water that I give is living water. Not only did this woman come to know God through Jesus that day, but she brought many other people to hear Jesus' teachings. We learned in this story that God's love is for all people, and we can follow Jesus by sharing love with everyone. 
when I read the Bible, it shows me how to love. And when I read the Bible, it makes me think of how, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. The Bible tells me so. And some sprinkles. Yay! Okay, I'm gonna try it. Very old exercise movement. And it, it strengthens your lower body and it allows you to focus and center yourself to the minute that you that we are in right now. So with Tai Chi, the movements are really slow, and this requires good balance. It requires a lot of strength. The dot that I made with the different ink, with the different black, it's separating into a blue streak at the beginning, and there's kind of a, another streak back there. The purple moves very, very quickly and dissolves very quickly. The brown is really separating into yellow and orange, and this blue has some blue and some green tape. Week four, our final week of Vacation Bible School, we heard part of a letter one of Jesus' followers, Paul, wrote to a church family. In Ephesians chapter four, Paul reminds them to show humility, gentleness, and patience, and to love one another. Paul also tells them it's important to stick together in a bond of peace. These two are important ways we can follow Jesus. The more we come together in our love of God and one another, the more peaceful our world can be. Thank you all for being part of Vacation Bible School this summer. I cannot wait until the time we can be together again in person. But until then, keep coming up with ways that you can follow Jesus. UBS was very different this year. Instead of home cooked meals, it was cooking videos from Jamie's Kitchen. Instead of juggling name tags, supply kits were lined up at the front of the church each Monday. Instead of laughter echoing within the building, giggles and ideas were shared through computer speakers. I'm so thankful for all those who put together plans and supplies, signed in onto Zoom to lead and the adults at home for guiding children through these activities. I know our kids had a good time learning about how to follow Jesus. I hope you did too as you traveled through their weeks. Isn't it nice to get a glimpse into what the children have been learning and doing over the course of these weeks of Vacation Bible School? I love that Kara put this together to share with us because after all, so many of us are used to being right there, to fixing meals, to singing their music, to helping with crafts and other activities. We're used to shepherding them from one activity to another. So this glimpse 
of Vacation Bible School Online has been a special treat today. But it is also more than that. The glimpse into what the children have been doing doesn't only make us smile and feel good, but it challenges us. It challenges us to ask questions about what it really means to follow Jesus. Because notice, both in the scripture that Jack read for us today, as well as the other scriptures the children learned about, following Jesus was not about claiming a belief, but about action. It wasn't about what was said, but what was done. It was not about worshiping or praying or repeating a scripture and then going on to live in ways that are harmful to other people, but instead about living in ways that mirrored Jesus's life. In other words, following Jesus is something we are called to do, to actively engage. And so how do we do that? Well, our children could tell us. We do that not by coercing people into religion, but by building relationships where faith and love are nurtured. We do that not by ignoring the very real physical and emotional and mental needs of people, but by having compassion, by hearing and believing their stories, and by responding with care and with generosity, with forgiveness and with love to all people. But the first step is to take a step, literally toward someone else, to take a step into a new and risky space, to take a step on the path of Jesus to take a step that leads us toward deeper and more significant relationships. See, that's what the disciples did in our reading today. And we read that and there are so many questions that we're left with. How well did they know Jesus already? It's probably safe to assume that if not personally, they certainly knew of him. What did it mean? for them to leave their boats and nets because of the call Jesus offered. How did Zebedee feel as he watched his sons climb onto shore and walk away? Did these four followers really have any idea what they were getting into? Would they have gone again if they had known? And the story prompts questions for us as well. What would our first new step look for today if we recommit ourselves to following Jesus? And yes, I know that right now we are challenged by a pandemic and unfortunately by rising numbers. Right now, there are really good reasons not to physically take a step toward another person or even to leave our homes. So maybe today it's not a literal step, but a figurative one. Maybe the step isn't first with our feet, although that will come, but maybe with our hearts. Maybe today's first step is to reach out in care to someone with whom you have experienced differences. Maybe today's first step is to listen to the story of someone who is different from you maybe even someone you assume you won't like, and to learn from their story. Maybe today's first step 
is to feed someone. Whether that means making a donation to an organization like the free lunch program or community or shelter house, or maybe it means fixing a meal and safely delivering it to someone you know is struggling. Following Jesus means many things, but if we pay attention to who Jesus was and what he did, we will discover that the list is less focused on statements of what we believe or checklists of church attendance and other duties. Rather, following Jesus is a commitment of our whole lives. And we start each day with one new fresh step. So today, following Jesus might mean that when you meet someone who is different from you, you greet them with kindness. Today, it might mean that when you witness injustice, you speak up and name it for what it is. Today, it might mean that when people are hungry, you feed them. When they are hurting, you listen to their story. When they are grieving, you offer them comfort. Whatever it means today and each day, what's at the core of that is that following Jesus means we must act. May it be so. Following Jesus is about action. The actions we take when we greet others with kindness or when we make the choice to help another person. Jesus challenges us to be in relationship with one another as givers and receivers of the gracious gift of God's love. Today, I invite you to welcome this mutual relationship with God and with each other. And I invite you to continue in your support of the ministries of First Christian Church. In this time of virtual worship, financial gifts can be made by mailing in your offering to the postal address on the screen or electronically by clicking the donate button on the website. May we give generously. As we prepare to come to the table together, I invite you to gather whatever food and drink you plan to use for communion this morning. As we enter into our time of communion together, we recognize that this table is wide and its welcome is complete. We are guests of the Holy One, and we're called into relationship with all of God's children. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for all the gifts you offer us. As we gather here at your table, help us to seek to extend your loving welcome to all your children. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We remember the meal that Jesus shared when he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to those who were present and said, take and eat this bread. I invite you to eat of the bread and as you do so to offer your body to the work of God in our world. After supper, Jesus took the cup and blessed it and gave it to those who were present and said, this cup represents the new covenant of my love for you. Each time you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, remember me. I invite you now to drink of the cup, affirming your desire for the love of God to flow through you.
The worship service may end, but following Jesus continues. May we go into the world carrying love, compassion, and hope of God with us. Amen.